fellow watch comrades. This is Greg Hester, the watch comrade here at the EAA 2009 Air Venture. We've been having a great show here this week. Been selling a lot of Russian watches and turning on a lot of guys to the Russian watch fetish that we all seem to have here. So we're very glad that you are going to join us for this special segment of the Watch Comrade Show. One of the coolest things about this week is we met a couple of pilots who actually fly World War II era Russian planes. This plane behind me is called the Yak-9. Now, I'm not going to make any pretense that I can tell you all about this plane because you know that what I do is tell you more about watches. I'll let these gentlemen introduce themselves. And what I've been really excited about is they're into Russian planes. This week I've gotten them into Russian watches. So why don't you guys introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the, about the planes you fly. I'm Ken Carlomagno from uh, Petaluma, California. We flew about 2,000 miles here a couple days ago. And uh, I fly the Russian Yak-11, C-11, which is uh, to the left. And uh, my compatriot here is Jim Cook. Jim flies this beautiful airplane, which is a Yak-9. Now, what would the, what would the, like, during World War II, what would have been the U.S. equivalent, so to speak, of the Yak-9, or the, or the 11? Uh, probably the P-51, but it's a lower altitude fighter, but uh, it's a low 10,000 foot fighter. Most of the fighting was point defense uh, over the city to airfields and other formations, or any other people there, troop formations. So it's a low altitude fighter, but it's purely defense. You were telling me yesterday, though, that this is a more maneuverable plane than the it's lighter, and it's got uh, roughly the same horsepower as a P-51 Alpha A model, and uh, it is more nimble and more quick. Uh, because of the lower weight. Lower weight. you got you got a more nimble Now, we're, we're going to get a shot of, a, of an airplane in a minute. What's the main difference between the 9 and the 11? I noticed you've got a bigger cockpit. Is that? Yeah. The, the 11 was a derivative from the Yak-3 near the end before the Russians transitioned into jets. And it was kind of used as a fighter trainer. And many of them were built uh, in satellite countries. Mine was built in the Czech Republic and was exported to the Egyptian Air Force. And they were used kind of as a fighter trainer. And basically mine was a later built in 52. The 9 here, the GMs were traditionally, they were built around 43 to 45 era. So this is more Korean vintage warrior airplane that is powered by radar radial engine versus GEMS, which is World War II, powered by an inline Allison engine. Now, originally they were powered by a Klima, M M105 or 106, I believe. Now what, is YAK short for anything? Yak Yakolet. Yakolet design group. Is that a, like a family name, or is that it's a family name? Yeah, family uh, name? Okay. Now, how much of these planes are original, and how much is stuff you've had to, to, to redo or, or uh, restore? Well, by 11, for example, the airframe and the wings, we, everything outside of the wheels and the engine, far, far well forward from the engine mount, is original. It's okay. absolutely original. So, uh, it's, it was, uh, you know, used, I think, the logbooks, we had the original logbooks, it had uh, uh, 5,650 hours on the airframe. And what it was, when they were exported, out of Egypt after they were retired about 1982 to 1984. Uh, it was a Frenchman, John Baptiste Solis, bought about 30 of these. They were on a stockpile and he sold them to different people in the free world country about 1984 to about 1990. And this one ended up in Chino and ended up being rebuilt by fighter recruiters. Steve Benton was a very famous both base and air okay. And uh, the Sanders brothers actually helped put it together too. They fly C Furies and they have Dennis and Brian Sanders. How common are these in the U.S. among uh, pilots? Well, I'd say the is probably no more than 10. So really, it's only like 10. So as you're seeing, two of only about 10 planes like this that are in the United States. And actually, um, we got the pleasure yesterday. These guys were cool enough to let us climb up into the cockpit. So. Um, you guys get to continue to be jealous of how many cool Russian planes I get to go into because I am the watch comrade. All right, thanks, guys. Thank I really you so appreciate much. it. Thank you. Thanks, guys.